Whether it's in your art journaling or mixed media, no matter what your project is, we all love to add that bit of colour. And one of my favourite ways of doing that are with sprays. But did you know there are many different things you can do with your sprays? Well, keep watching, because today I'm going to show you just how versatile they can be. Could well be techniques you've not seen before. Maybe they're just techniques you've forgotten about and haven't tried in years. So, go grab a brew, get yourself comfy, and come on, let's go have some fun. Hi one and all, Tori the Awful Dabbler back again, and welcome to my channel. So today, it's all about the sprays. Thought it would be a really fun idea, maybe for those of you who are just getting started, and possibly even for those of you who've been doing it for years, to show you just how versatile your sprays can be. I was chatting with somebody last week, brand new to crafting, and they were asking me some advice about, you know, what sprays would be good for them to get for the kind of crafting they were looking at doing. And they were really surprised to hear all the things I said I do with mine. And I thought, well, do you know what? Let's just go and do a video, maybe to inspire you guys. So sit back, relax. I'm about to get pretty inky, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Ready? Here we go. Number one. Well, let's face it, number one had to be just the basic spray. These are the inks I probably use the most, and I do have lots of other brands as well. Um, as you guys know, I'm in the design team for Pearly Winks, but I actually were using their products way before I was invited to join them. Um, I wouldn't show anything on any of my videos if I sort of didn't stand behind um, the products. But I just really quickly just wanted to say, if you have a, a plain spray like this, that's just, just color, it has no chalky finish, it has no glitter, you don't need to shake it, you don't need to give it a stir. But if you've got something that has, can you see the chalk in the bottom of that? And with this, oh, I love this. This is the uh, hint of gold. This is uh, actually the new spray, it's just come out. And this one here that has, can you see that swirling? That's the mica. Those kind of sprays, you do have to give a mix but never shake your bottle up and down because um, you'll end up clogging the pipe inside your spray. Always swirl it around. Um, give it a good swirl. And if you find, after you've swirled it for a few seconds and you know if you're getting bored and you've still got the chalky residue at the bottom, well, just simply unscrew the top take out the spray bit, stick the end of a paintbrush or a, whatever, a stick in, just give it a mix. Pop the lid back on, boom, you're done. Right, so number one, the basic spray. Well, obviously it goes probably without saying, but I'm gonna do it. The closer you spray, the smaller of an area you cover, but the slightly more intense your color's going to be. And then the further away you spray, you see, probably can't even see that. Probably yellow wasn't the best color for me to actually use because you can only see the drips. Um, let me see if I can actually bring that in. There you go. Sorry, I'm getting terrible glare off of that. This was a terrible color for me to use. There you go. I think you can see it slightly there. You see the shade there and then if I, just further away as I go in more and more. Do you know what? That was a terrible color for me to use, yellow. Do you know, let me just grab a different color. Didn't think that one through, really did I? Randomly grabs another one quickly. Oh yes, my favorite, hot pink. Okay, let me grab some tissue. Oh, these two covers are great. Okay, told you I'd gonna get inky. 
Right, so we'll do that one again. So the closer you are, the smaller spray you're going to get. And then the further away you are, there you go, now you can start to see it. You get the smaller sprays, but you can build it up. And always get into the habit, when you've finished spraying, just give it a wipe. Um, it just, and it's another thing just to help you prevent any kind of clogging. Okay, let me pop that there for a second and, well, you know, seriously not going to waste all of that on my mat. Let me just give that a wipe there and then, oh, that's nice. And then I'm going to use that. And guys, never throw these away either. These always can go in journals. As some of you know, I'm about to start my junk journal journey. And I certainly will use things like my clean up tissues as well. Anyway, so that was number one, the basic spray. Pretty self-explanatory. Before we go on to number two, I just want to remind you all, whatever medium you're using, but obviously I'm talking about your sprays here, everything's going to look slightly different depending on what type of paper you're using, whether you've primed it with gesso, without gesso, is it a white gesso, is it a clear gesso? They are things to think about because it will affect your result. I very quickly just grabbed um, the uh, Hint of Gold uh, sprays that Pearly Winks are doing. Um, let me see. Uh, now, this is just cheap as chips, uh, mixed media paper. Bear with me and I shall tell you exactly what weight. Okay, it's a 250 GSM mixed media paper. I'm really sorry, my uh, friends in America, I know you do it in, I think it's weight, I don't know what that is, but it's, look. It's a pretty hefty card. It takes an it takes an awful lot of mediums. This is what it looks like with a clear gesso, and that's what it looks like. Same paper, but with no gesso. So can you see? Whereas here, you've got it's, it looks a lot smoother. Here, it's going to be a little bit patchier because it's it's going to sink into the fibres a bit more. It's not going to move as much. Um, and obviously, that's using a white gesso you're gonna get a slightly chalkier uh, result, but that wasn't using a chalk spray. That was using one of these. It's sort of the clear, like the clear spray, but it's got the gold glitter in it. So, but you, it will give you a slightly chalkier spray. So if you're wanting to coat your paper, then maybe the clear gesso, if you want to keep you know, if you don't want that chalky spray, go for clear gesso. Right, so that's the basics out of the way. Number two. Okay, number two, the flick. Yes, I am naming these. Um, <laughs> you know, artistic license and all of that. The flick, just like you do with a paintbrush when you're, say, doing your acrylics watercolors because remember you can treat these just like your watercolor paints so the flick as I have now named it you can unscrew your spray you can do it numerous ways you could do it from here and just flick straight on again why is it I pick up, it's such a pretty pink, but obviously I want something that's going to show up a lot better on camera. I should go back to my favourite hot pink. Pick that up and flick. Oh yeah, now we're talking. And just flick. 
Eh? But again, you don't have to do it, you know, using this if you want. Dip your paintbrush in, get an old toothbrush, flick a toothbrush, the bristles. Make sure you're flicking in the right direction. Remember, when you've got your project in front of you and you're doing any kind of flick method, pull the bristles back towards you and then let go. It will flick on the paper. Do not pull the bristles down towards the paper and then let go because you'll end up spotty. So you can do it that way, you can flick whatever you like, but flick. Great spots, great splatters, great for um, obviously your art journaling, your mixed media product projects. You know, you can layer it up and get some superb results. And again, you the more you go in, the more intense your colour is going to be. So th that was the flick. Okay, ready? Number three, well, it's the drip. Got a pipette. Going to take my teal colour, the hint of gold, and I'm going to take my lid off. Right there. Take a little bit in my pipette. Give it a tap so not too many air bubbles. And I'm going to drip. and let it run. Give it a tap. See? Great results. And these, I mean, I, I, I like this because these, obviously these sprays are, are translucent. So again, I, you know me, I love my layers. Dip in and drip, drip. A bit of shake, a bit of tap, lovely. There you go, the drip. Okay then, so number four, we've got blending. Pop a bit, ink on to my mat, work it into my dauber, just simple you can just edge don't forget you can edge your cards as randomly as you like and obviously you know again it depends on what card you're using how well how quick it soaks into the edges I like that yeah just try but again you just use it for edging go around the edges of your card like so take away those white edges Blending. Another thing you can do with your sprays. Okay, ready? Number five. Okay, so this has to be probably one of my favorite all time things. I know it's been around for many years. I'm absolutely not claiming I invented this. Uh, some of you might have done this uh, with different products, but I just want you to know that you can do this with your inks as well. So, I am taking cheapy-ish shaving foam. Has to be foam, not gel, okay? Now, I'm gonna fill, you wanna make sure there's no gaps, okay? So I'll probably fast forward this bit. Right, there you go. Obviously guys, you don't necessarily to have a massive big tray of it. That's just the tray I could find to do a demo. So don't worry, you don't have to be like spending loads of money on uh, shaving foam. Anyway, right, next bit, you just grab your sprays. Take the lid off and spray.
Okay, now then all you do is you take the end of something and swirl, swirl, swirl it. Pretty patterns, just give it a mix. Up and down. Get those lovely combined colour patterns. And I have got to say, I have found some of the best results um, on pages is using, what's the polite way of putting it, economy photo paper. I mean, you know, you can get this stuff saves the pennies um, and I'm certainly going to be doing this as some of you know I'm taking the next step and journeying into junk journaling and uh, I'll probably do technique like this just actually to pretty up some of my pages so take your economy photo paper this is happens to be a glossy one when face down give it a tap And um, I have been told, but admittedly, it's never lasted long enough in my craft room because when I start doing this, everybody in the house loves to come in and have a play, that actually uh, your shaving foam in a dish actually will last a good few days if you, I think, probably put some uh, surround wrap around it or some cling film around it. Um, it will last, but to be honest, it's cheap. I've missed a bit at the top, so just pop it back down. Give it a tap, give it a tap. And I'm just gonna come over and pop that over on that side a little bit, just to give myself a little bit more on the page. Tap it down. Make sure it makes contact with the shaving foam. Lovely. Lift it out. Okay. Going to take my scraper and scrape off the excess. Oh, it's great. And at the end of the day, you get a really lovely smelling piece of work as well. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's like that old school, back at school playtime fun. Let me pop that over there for a minute. Just put that there. My hands a quick wipe. And then just wipe off the excess from your project. You can go back in as many times as you want. You can change the colours that you've sprayed, obviously, into your, into your dish. I mean, yesterday I was having a play and I got that result. Um, and that's literally just using the cheapy cheapy um, sorry not cheapy cheapy economy <laughs> glossy photo card um, so yeah I mean isn't that great I mean could you imagine having a journal cover which I probably will end up doing something like that now there you go ready ready for the next technique you're gonna like this one number six okay so I know not everybody's going to be lucky enough to have one of these. And I was very sweetly given this, gosh, absolutely ages ago, a friend of mine who was going to go into cake decorating, got this for herself. And then when she gave it up, she passed it on to me and said, could I do anything with it? So this, I think, as I say, it was originally sold for just using uh, food coloring uh, on cakes. But I know you can, I th I've seen them on, certainly you can get them on Amazon. Pretty sure I've also seen it, if any of you guys watch Chanda, the uh, shopping telly channel, I think they've had it on there too. And obviously it's, they're, they're, it's not as expensive um, as it would be if you went out and just got, you know, the spray gun head and then uh, all the units to go with it 
but it it really is this is not a professional spray gun set i mean it really this is like beyond the basics that you can get but for what i use it for so much fun so look this was me playing yesterday so you've seen me spray spray with the inks and look you can get absolutely beautiful blending backgrounds you know um I mean, yeah, it, it, it sort of, you know, you have to go off and practice a little bit. Oh, there goes my ink. Um, you have to, it's all a bit practice, but it's all a bit of fun. Um, but again, it's just another technique you can do with your inks. And all you have to do, and you use so little of this, uh, take your lid off, take your pipette, give it a tap, take about that much. put it into the top of my spray gun. So, don't overfill it because you can always go back in. Right there. Put the lid on that. That's out of the way. Okie doke. And I've got my paper there. Now, guys, it's loud. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it in real time but I'm gonna put a bit of music on for you whilst I spray. Okay, and then I can change colors. Okay, you get the idea. I mean, I can keep going and I can keep blending that and blending that. But I mean, as I say, that's one result I got yesterday. Oh, there you go. I mean, look at that. Isn't that great background? I mean, does that not scream sunset to you? But again, you can do, you, you can be doing all of this through your stencils as well. And it just gives you that slightly more, you know, obviously airbrushed look. Oh, ready for the next one? Let's go get it. Okay, so next suggestion. Well, guys, you know, use it as a paint. Just pour a little bit into your palette. I've got a Bockingford bit of paper here. Um, I've just got some uh, watercolor uh, card from some random pad. That nothing special but guys you know you can stamp color in with this yeah. you're gonna get beautiful results look I've just wet the surface of my paper obviously this is um, just having a play but look how vibrant your inks are, you know? Treat them just, just as you would 
your watercolours. How beautiful is that? And you can just make some stunning backgrounds just by throwing some down. Add a bit more water if you want. See how beautiful those go on. I always go off and paint with mine, I have to say. And again, the nice thing is because it then means that you can spray your background and then if you're colouring in an image it means you've got you, you've got complementary colours you, you you're using the same well not complementary it's your same colour palette you're using the same colour palette and it just works so beautifully and remember just like watercolours you know, you can layer. So you let this layer dry and then you can go back in. And the more you go over with the same colour, you can build up the intensity, inte intensity of the colour. But I mean, look at that. How pretty is that? And again, you're using your sprays, you're painting and you're just getting great different results. You see that? Okay, sorry, got a bit of glare going on again. So I can tilt that back for you. Um, so go and have a play. You know, your your inks will react differently depending on what card you're using, and also what's in your inks. You know, experiment. Throw some salt down. There are absolutely loads of videos out there by adding salt to your page, just like techniques you can do in watercolour techniques. That's basically what these are. So go and have a play. Use, use your inks, not just for spraying. Have fun, experiment and enjoy. That is what all of this is all about. You know, not just using it for nothing. Get to know your products. It's like I said before, guys, it's fun. It's the journey. It's not worrying about your end results. But, you know, look at all the things that we've done today. These are just a handful of the things that we've had a play with today. Yeah, so we've used it for blending and edging. We have marbled, beautiful backgrounds. Look at that, guys. You know, certainly journal covers, journal pages. I've used it in a spray gun. I know, again, as I said, not everybody's got one, but it's nice to know you can. And you get beautiful results. We've painted just like your watercolours. And we did the splats and drips and everything else. And there's so much more. So go get your sprays out and go have a play, guys. Enjoy it, have fun. It was just a quick video today, but I hope you enjoyed it. This video should be up on Friday or Saturday. It was recorded, today's Monday. Um, I'm actually having dental surgery tomorrow, Tuesday. And fingers crossed, as long as I've healed up okay um, and there's no complications, the following Friday or Saturday is when the first video will go up uh, that's the junk journal video. And when this video goes up, I've done a very quick snippet video to give you some inspirations of things that uh, you might want to go off and collect to get yourself ready for the junk journal video. A bit confusing, I know, but I think you get what I mean. So, unless there's any complications, in a week's time, I will be doing my very first junk journal video. But remember, 
I'm doing it from scratch. I have watched no how-to videos. I don't want to watch any. I've been inspired some of by my incredibly talented friends who have already made some. But I literally just want to collect stuff and make it myself. And I invite you to join me. It's going to be so much fun. Can't wait. But I hope this has inspired you too. And I know I'm certainly going to be using some of the techniques I've used today to be colouring uh, my new junk journal as well. But look what sprays can do. Um, if you guys are interested in the pearly wink sprays, um, there really is an absolutely huge range. So I shall leave a link down below. As I say, they're a UK family-based company and I'm, you know me, I'm, I'm just so for supporting the smaller companies and it really is a privilege to be part of, of their de design team. Uh, it really is. You just couldn't meet nicer people. So do go check them out. So that's it. Hope I've inspired you. I uh, hope I've got you thinking. I Do let me know down in the comments below all your other suggestions that you could do with your sprays too. So my lovelies, from my arty crafty heart to yours, be good, be safe, be kind, be loved, and I shall see you again soon. Bye all.